Hi, I'm Sarish Sudhakaran and in this video, I'll explain why it might be a thankless exercise to compare 8-bit and 10-bit footage from the Panasonic GH5 as of March 2017. Once the 400 megabits per second firmware update arrives, the differences should be more striking. There are lots of videos online comparing the two options, and most of the reviewers have been disappointed. Well, if you put a nail to your forehead and strike a hammer, you don't have the right to be disappointed with the results. Let me keep this simple. If I mention terms you don't understand, you'll find links explaining them in the article that goes with this video. To me, compression is a necessary evil for distribution. It has its benefits. In contrast to that, compression is potentially the enemy of acquisition. Acquisition is the act of capturing footage. You want footage to be of the best quality possible. So after all that compression, when the viewer finally watches it, the whole effort was worth it. One recent example of scene of disastrous compression is the opening sequence of House of Cards. It's a great sequence, but the takeaway is, even if you shoot raw in 14-bit, heavy compression can undo your good work. Compression ultimately has to do with data. Think eggs in a crate or school children in a school bus. There's a limited amount of space and you cannot fit more than the limit. Well, with eggs and children you can, but with digitized samples you can't. You can play lots of tricks with compression but for every savings gained, you compromise on image quality. Let's start with a simple pixel. Each pixel has three channels, R, G, and B, so we begin with three. Then each pixel has a bit depth, which in the case of the GH5 is either 8-bit or 10-bit. Next we have chroma subsampling. I use a simple formula to calculate the compression level of chroma subsampling. 420 gives 50%, while 422 is about two-thirds or 67%. When you multiply all these numbers, you get the uncompressed size of the pixel in bits. To write the data in its entirety, assuming the camera is capable of capturing the color you want, you need this entire space. The size of an 8-bit 420 frame at best is 12.7 megabytes. For a 10-bit 422 frame, it's 21.2 megabytes. You'll find the calculations in the article if you want to follow along. To get the data rate, multiply by the frame rate. Let's assume it's 24 frames per second. So the data rates are as follows. To many, this is too much data. Here I'm comparing 420 and 422, but you can use my system to calculate any combination you like. What you'll see is that 10-bit 422 footage, I'll just call them 8-bit and 10-bit footage from here on. The 10-bit footage has and needs about 1.67 times more data to show its worth. Why so? Imagine you have an arena to fill with people. If you reduce the size of the arena, you'll now have to start eliminating people. You fuse the identities of two somewhat similar looking people to form an average. And that's essentially what compression does. Through some brilliant engineering, they eliminate everything visually necessary so we can enjoy the final product without feeling like we missed something. Kevin, stop here. What? <laughs> Come on! Imagine you keep compressing and compressing. How far can you go before you don't see a difference between the two bit depths? Ultimately, you just get colors that weren't even there to begin with, which is how ugly artifacts are born. In the GH5 internally, you can record 8-bit 4K at 100 megabits per second and 10-bit presently at 150 megabits per second. Now that's a compression level of 24.3 times and 27 times respectively. They don't look too far off, but to maintain the same advantage of 10-bit, you'll need 1.67 times more space for the data. In equal in terms, you'll need to compress 10-bit footage to no less than 280 megabits per second. If you go lower, you'll see less and less of a difference between 8-bit and 10-bit. I believe that's what's happening in the GH5 presently. 150 megabits for 10-bit won't show you any differences, if at all. Now you know why Panasonic is going to release a 400 megabits per second intra-frame option later in 2017. How do you relate inter-frame and intra-frame? When the broadcast specifications were set for HDTV, it was decided 50 megabits per second intra-frame is roughly equal to 100 megabits per second intra-frame for 1080p. 4K is 4 times the data, so you'll need 200 megabits per second intra-frame 
and 400 megabits per second intra-frame respectively. For the GH5, we need 280 times 2 or 560 megabits per second to maintain that difference, because the 400 megabits per option is going to be an intra-frame codec. Of course, Panasonic has to juggle the practical necessity of writing data onto SD cards in real time, which are the new V60 class cards, by the way, so has decided 400 megabits is enough. A quick point about the 8-bit compression level. It's only half the minimum recommended. That's why those who shoot with the GH4, the GH5, and the Sony A7 cameras will see a lot of compression artifacts at 100 megabits per second. It's just too much compression. And I'm pretty sure the external uncompressed option is just a rehashed stream of this compressed version. Otherwise, their higher-end cameras won't sell. And for 150 megabits at 10-bit, that's even worse. Whatever advantage 10-bit and higher chroma subsampling gives you is wiped out by worse compression. That's the bottom line. You can also look at this in terms of color, but it's a lot more complicated. 8-bit footage has 256 shades per channel, with a total of 16.7 million colors. 10-bit has 1,024 shades per channel, with a total of a billion plus colors. That's 64 times the total colors. But shouldn't the data rate be 64 times more? Not exactly. The human eye can't really see more than 10 million colors, and that's at its very best. Even considering the entirety of the dynamic range of her eyes, the shades and gradations we can see, and the total number of hues, it's not going to be anywhere near 1 billion. So you're really not going to see the colors, and you don't need 64 times the data. I'll have some numbers for you in the article. A great guide to an acceptable data rate is ProRes and DNxHR in high quality. At 422 for 4K, you need about 880 megabits per second, and this has proven itself through color grading passes. Panasonic will be giving us the bare minimum, which is 400 megabits per second. In theory, this should show a difference. So before we compare 8-bit and 10-bit footage on the GH5, the wise thing to do is to wait until we have the 400 megabits per second option available. If you do shoot 10-bit, it's in your best interest to shoot 400 megabits per second, or why bother at all? You're only fooling yourself if you ignore the math. Lastly, let's not forget, if you don't have a 10-bit post-production pipeline, you won't see the benefits of 10-bit. Ultimately, if you depend on YouTube or Vimeo for delivery, the compression levels are going to be so high, if you haven't exposed your camera correctly, you're going to see ugly banding and artifacts, even if you shoot with the Alexa or Red Weapon. Compression is where great cameras come to die. For now, Let's reserve judgment and give Panasonic the benefit of the doubt. The GH5 is a landmark camera, similar to the 5D Mark II and Sony A7S. Hopefully, I'll get hold of a GH5 by the end of March and I'll try to publish a detailed review in April. If there's anything specific you want me to cover in the review, let me know. For now, grab a cup of your favorite caffeinated beverage and read the articles I'll link to. By the time the camera arrives, you'll be ready. Bye now. Color of the pen! is rrrr.